And this can be seen as follows. If you start here and want to go to here, then the algorithm will proceed walking towards the goal. But now say there is an obstacle, which looks like that, then the algorithm will still try to walk towards the goal. And indeed, the distance to the goal is always decreasing. Now if this obstacle goes on like that, then while the distance is always decreasing, the algorithm will walk a long way until it reaches the goal. Whereas the correct solution would have been to go backwards only once for a little bit and then the algorithm could have walked directly to the goal which would have been considerably shorter. Right, so you see our Dijkstra algorithm uses g, the known distance from the start to n, whereas our greedy algorithm uses h, an estimate of the distance to the goal. And extra expands many nodes, whereas the greedy algorithm expands fewer nodes. However, the Dijkstra algorithm is guaranteed to find the optimal solution, whereas the greedy may deliver good results in general, but is not guaranteed to find the optimal solution. And now we'll do something interesting. We will just define a new cost function and we'll just take the g, which we had in Dijkstra's algorithm, and we'll just add the h, which we had in our greedy solution. And very astonishingly, using the sum of those two functions, we will get the following properties. We will usually expand less nodes than the Dijkstra algorithm and this I find very astonishing when you see it for the first time. It is guaranteed to find the optimal solution. So, very interesting, you just add a function which gives us the exact distance from the start and another function which is just an estimate of the distance to the goal and although taking age alone does not give me an optimal solution, the sum of those two functions is guaranteed to provide me the correct solution. And this algorithm is pretty famous and it's called the A star algorithm. So now at any point in the algorithm, when we want to go from the start to the goal, and we have to decide if we should add this node, then we'll have to compute the value of the function f, which is g plus h. So the g function, that is the path back to the start, and we know that exactly, whereas the h function is an estimate of the remaining distance towards the goal. And I should add the following. The h function must be admissible, which means that the actual cost from n to the goal must be larger or equal to h, the estimated cost. Right, and therefore the direct line distance is a useful admissible estimate because the direct line is always shorter or equal to the real distance between n and g. But you can find such an estimate for the remaining cost to the goal for other applications as well. For example, if this graph spans all the states of a checkerboard game where the start situation is the initial setup of the figures and the goal situation is that player A wins, then you probably can show a certain board state to an expert chess player who just looks at it and will tell you, well, yes, that is checkmate in 10 moves. And so by using his expertise, he can give you an estimate of how far it is to reach the goal state that player A wins. And if he underestimated the opponent, of course, it may take longer. But in order for A star to give optimal answers, it shouldn't take shorter. So this is important. H must be admissible. Now let me give you a little bit more insight into this function. F equals G plus H. So again, let's have the situation. This is our set of visited nodes and we're about to expand this node. And so we have this cost made up of G, the known cost from the start to node N and the estimated distance H. Now we know what G means. G, that is the known cost from the start to N. And we also know what H means. That's the unknown but estimated cost from N to G. And we know that f is the sum of g plus h, but what does it mean? Well, f is the minimum cost of a path from start to go, which goes through n. Well, and to see this is pretty easy, because if the path goes through this node, then I know for this part of the path it has cost g, and for the remaining part it has at least cost of h, so the sum is the minimum of the cost I will have from s over n to g. 
Now let's also have a look how we have to change our implementation. So as you remember in front, we so far had tuples consisting of the distance, which is g, the node itself and the previous node. And by placing g to be the first component of this tuple, we achieved that those tuples are in the order of increasing cost when being sorted. And so we used that fact when we pop the root element of our heap because then we know this will be the element with the smallest g. So now we have to order our elements according to f. So in order to make that work with our current implementation we just put f in front of g. Now here's the code in which we'll modify the Dijkstra's algorithm to obtain the A star algorithm. Now let's go down to the code. We now have an additional function, a helper function, which we need to compute the Euclidean distance between two points. And as you'll expect, we need this function to compute the direct line distance to the goal. Now there's only a few modifications to be done in the main part of the algorithm. The first change will be that since our tuples now should have four elements instead of three, you will now have to add a component here as the first component of this tuple. And what is called here the total cost, that is actually f. So that is the cost from the start to the node plus the estimate from the node to the go. And when entering the start node, this total cost is of course the distance between the start and the goal node. So the next change is here, and I have already done this for you, since the tuples now have four elements. I have to assign the tuple now to four variables, now including the total cost. So leave that as is. And the only other change is down here. So you will have to provide those four elements which you push on the heap instead of three, which you had previously. So compute the new cost as usual, but now add the distance from the new position to the goal to this new cost to obtain the new total cost as well and make this the first component in your for tuple. And that's all there is to do. So mainly modify the start node tuple and the code which pushes the neighbors of a node. So go ahead and implement this. So let me give you a teaser what you will see after you finish the implementation because now it's really cool to play with the interface. So set start node here and end node there. And you'll see it found the path immediately. And you also will see it didn't expand any nodes except for those along the path from the start to the go. Now if I start to block this path, it will expand more nodes. But as you see, it is not expanding very many nodes in the wrong direction. So if you remember the example we had earlier with the dead end, then you'll remember that when the situation looked similar to this one, the Dijkstra algorithm produced a huge number of nodes expanding here, whereas the A star only expands a very small number of nodes, just a narrow passage around this corner here. And in fact, if I put the end node rather here, then it will expand only a single line of nodes here. There's also something else which is interesting. So if I place the node here and there's no obstacles, A star will expand all those nodes. However, if I place it here, it will not expand any unnecessary nodes. Also, if I place it here, or if I place it diagonally, why does it expand much more nodes if I put it here? The problem is that due to our simplistic distance function on the grid, the length of the path from the start to the go, which we find eventually, is longer than the direct line distance. And so, since our direct line distance underestimates the true distance, this costs us some extra expansions of nodes. However, in this situation, our simplistic distance measure along the grid is identical to the direct line distance, and so there's no expansion of unnecessary nodes. So overall, you see now that the algorithm is much faster and you can use it at interactive speeds on a normal computer. So you can think of complicated structures 
In fact, even random-like structures through which the algorithm will find a path. 